Welcome to Douglas Wilson's The Podcast, presented by New St. Andrews College. So welcome to the podcast. This is episode 207 of the podcast. I'm Douglas Wilson. Thank you for joining me. It is uh, good to have you here. You may have noticed, if you are a regular uh, listener to the podcast, that I introduced this as episode 207. And by rights, it should have been 208. And last week should have been 207. But last week, there was nothing. And, um, and you may have wondered about that. Well, occasionally, from time to time in the world of electronic things, the digital gremlins get to work and they make things disappear. So uh, I generally record these uh, four to go, and I recorded uh, I recorded them last week, and and lo, the di- the digital gremlins did their work, and it all vanished. And this is because apparently, in the providence of God, He wanted me to do better. <laughs> so I will try to be better than the. Um, than what I did last time, which you will now never hear. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today in this uh, session about uh, a phrase I used in a, a couple of recent blog posts of mine, and that phrase is, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. I believe that what we're up against in, um, in these crazy times, politically and culturally and so forth, is uh, it's like a couple of giant sumo wrestlers pushing and shoving, trying to get here and there. In microcosm, a good example of taking the bait would be the uh, January 6th incursion into the Capitol, which has to be ranked up there with uh, the king of the bad ideas. All right, so you had a huge demonstration in Washington, which that, that's okay. We, uh, Washington does those. Th- those are uh, standard. Those are routine. And then a bunch of people in that march uh, wanted to head over to the Capitol, went over to head over to the Capitol, and then they um, went into the Capitol and got outside the velvet ropes, and there was some uh, vandalism, and there was some, you know, lots of bad stuff. Well, in some places, the, the Capitol Police were apparently uh, inviting the people in. Other places, they made their way in. One, um, one protester was shot and killed. Uh, so it was just a mess. But what you can see, what, what immediately happened after that was that the Capitol was shut down, National Guardsmen were brought in, surrounding, you know, everything went into lockdown because of what was alleged to have been the most serious threat to the United States since the Civil War. And uh, it was disorderly, it was ill-advised, it was not a good idea, all of that. Nobody's supporting, no, nobody's supporting that incursion. But it was not the most serious threat to our republic since the Civil War. I mean, leftists have bombed the, the <laughs> leftists have bombed the Capitol. This is it's not what it uh, is being represented as. But it was done in such a way as it was a piece of cake for the media to represent it as being something like that. These uh, dangerous uh, white nationalists, these dangerous white supremacists, these. Uh, dangerous buffalo men who are you know doing their thing what i want to encourage conservative christians to do particularly between now and the midterm elections which are just over a year away is to not take the bait i believe that there are any number of provocations uh being uh, served up to us and these provocations are the sorts of things that could make upset conservatives go sideways and and do something unruly but this is the um, here here's the issue let's say the maricopa audit comes back and shows that uh, biden did not win maricopa county he lost it by a wide margin and let's say that the response to this information is to say well tough we you know don't worry about it. you know it's to Call up everybody crazy who was involved in the in the audit. And let's say there's an unsatisfactory response to the report. Well, it'd be very easy for demonstrations to break out, protests to break out. And what happens if a group of people on the right 
get out of line and attack a federal building in Topeka somewhere, or let's say there's something like that. We don't want anything between now and the midterms to provoke a real crackdown and to make that crackdown look plausible, uh, look like it's not an overreaction. I believe that we ought to be behaving between now and the midterms in such a way as to make it impossible for anybody to point to it as a justification for crackdown, lockdown, uh, stringent measures. We can't, we can't put up with this uh, anymore. This is what I mean by don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. If it looks like they're wrecking the country on purpose, don't take the bait. If they say that you have to uh, get a vaccine card to get out, move out of your front yard, don't get the vaccine, but don't take the bait either. So the, I'm not talking about compliance. I'm, I'm happy with non-compliance to tyrannical, overreaching decrees, but I'm not happy with protesting or attacking or direct action. That's what I mean by taking the bait. Don't take the bait. That's my, that's my exhortation to you all. As we continue with the podcast, uh, this is 207. As we continue, merrily, I hope, through our study of the Greek words of sins that are listed in the New Testament, we've now arrived at a word that is used only once, another hopox. And the word here is enkathetas, enkathetas, and it is rendered as spy. We see it in Luke 20, 20. And they watched him and sent forth spies, there it is, which should feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his words, so they might deliver him under the power and authority of the governor. Okay, so this is the famous episode where Jesus was asked about taxes, and he replies that we should render to Caesar what is his, and to God what is his. These questioners were not just unfriendly to their questions, but they were sent by men who were trying to figure out some way of having Jesus killed. They could not do this openly because they feared the people, and so they had to resort to trickery, and so they sent spies. Now, the questioning was therefore dishonest. It was a disingenuous questioning. We are told that Jesus saw through their craftiness, and he responded with a shrewdness that was more than a match for them. The difference was that his shrewdness was honest and shrewder, and theirs was dishonest and lame. So, they, um, they were spies, but not really, uh, not really that competent in their spying. Jesus uh, saw right through, right, saw right through. So we're continuing on with the podcast. This is episode 207. And uh, the book review for this time around, this go around, is a book by Michael Reeves called The Unquenchable Flame. Uh, Michael Reeves, The Unquenchable Flame. I should mention at the beginning here that I I, I went through this book in um, audio as I have done with uh, some others of uh, Michael's books. And for some reason, I think that there's a, um, somebody has made a big metadata mistake at Audible or somewhere in the, in the, <laughs> somewhere in all this, such that when I, um, when I listen to anything by Michael Reeves, uh, the book comes up on my, on the little screen in my truck and a little photo in the, on the right-hand side Instead of a photo of Michael Reeves, it's a photo of Michael Moore, the, um, the noted leftist documentary filmmaker. So every, every, this is the one downside of listening to a book by Michael Reeves is I have to have this picture of Michael Moore um, staring out at me from my uh, dashboard. That's no good. But The Unquenchable Flame by Michael Reeves. This is a very short, uh, it's, a, it's a very readable, accessible history of the Reformation. And Reeves does a great job in weaving the story around the central uh, hinge upon which the whole Reformation turned. And that central hinge was uh, a justification by faith alone. That was Luther's great insight breakthrough uh, when he finally saw what the Apostle Paul was talking about in, in Romans. We are justified by faith alone apart from works of the law. and. And Reeves does a, a great job. He, he starts with Luther and, and works his way down through the, the Puritans, the 17th uh, century Puritans, 
And he just does a marvelous job providing historical detail, background information, but doing it in, in a structured way that highlights the doctrines that were at stake, the doctrines that were contested at that time between uh, the Protestants and, and Rome. So, uh, Michael Reeves is an engaging writer. He is um, he, he's very, very easy to, to follow. He is um, at the same time doctrinally savvy. He's you know he knows how to touch the pointed issue with a pin. Uh, it's just just a very good book. I, I enjoy his other stuff, and this was uh, this book was no exception. This episode has been brought to you by New Saint Andrews College. Tyrants know education is warfare, and so should we. If you want your student armed for battle and equipped to fight tyranny, apply at nsa.edu slash fall 2022. That's nsa.edu slash fall 2022.